So, and, and we certainly will be getting through this. We're going to be looking at finding some flashcards. That's always going to be your easiest and, and fastest way to create content because there are every, every time somebody creates a set of flashcards, it, it, uh, it's, it's automatically out there for people to use. We're going to be looking at um, uh, collaborating on, on, on shared sets. We'll have a look at adding images to flashcards. Um, if you have uh, Quizlet Plus, which which I've got, and I'll talk a little bit about that. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to try and sell Quizlet or, or anything like that to you. Um, but it, there are some some really good features with with the paid for version, you know, which I will mention to you, and, and it's obviously something you can then consider. Then we'll have a look at joining a class and completing a, a test on Quizlet, and then also we'll have a look at some of the game options. All right, so those, those were really the major things that we wanted to have a look at. However, I can see from the results of the poll that there are quite a lot of people who, you know, this is your first foray into, into Quizlet. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background to it. Um, and uh, that background comes by way of this. So I, I teach economics um, to grade 10, 11 and 12. And I realized many, many years ago that the there is a lot of terminology in, in, in the subjects that we teach. OK, so you know, whatever subject it is that you teach, you can really think about, you know, all, all the terminology, definitions, lists, and things like that, that, that your learners need to know. So just to give you an overview for, for economics um, exams, the whole of section A, all right? So we've got eight multiple choice questions here. We've got some, um, we've got some matching column items. We've got uh, ones where it's give one term for each of the following descriptions. So it's typically sort of one word or two word answers that the learners have to give. So that's 30 marks out of 150. Then, you know, if, we, if we're having a look at, at section B, again, there, there, there are very, there are easy marks to be gotten for, for some sort of one mark and two mark questions. Okay, and then two types of collusion. These are all things that can be included in flashcards for learners to learn. Um, you know, examples of things, a brief description. And so when I go through, you know, some of the Quizlet flashcards that I'm going to show you, you'll see that that there's a vast amount of learning that, that learners can do via um, flashcards. All right. In fact, this question paper, which is out of 150 marks, I've, I've added up the marks and any, any learner who's studied the Quizlet flashcards, and, and I tell my learners this all the time, if you study the Quizlet flashcards, you are guaranteed to get at least 50% for your exam paper. All right. Um, that's just the way it is. Uh, uh, you know, as I've said to people, we can't expect learners to answer a question like evaluate South Africa's fiscal policy if the learner doesn't even know what the word fiscal policy means. So, Using Quizlet flashcards is a great way for learners to to you know study these concepts in in small bite sized um, sort of uh, bits and and really get to master the, the the content that they need to know. All right, so I'm going to jump back into my presentation quickly and um, I'm going to to show you what. Uh, what we're looking at. Okay, so the question here, why use it? So for teachers, it's great for introducing keywords and definitions, for revision of keywords and definitions, for informal assessments, all right? So you'll see that there are a number of ways in which um, uh, informal assessments can be done based on a set of flashcards, all right? And then, you know, um, the great thing is you can add some fun to lessons. So more and more over the last few years, I've, I've been making use of my flashcards to, to, to just spice things up a little bit, um, especially on a Friday, uh, you know, the, the learners very often, they say, so can't we have a fun lesson? You know, and I used to say, don't be ridiculous. I don't want anybody having any fun in my, my lesson. Um, but, uh, you know, with with all of the various game options on on Quizlet, it's it's easy to add some fun to lessons. All right. Now, right at the outset, I need to say to you that um, if you have a 
TV in your class or you have a projector that, that you can hook your um, device up to, that's great because then definitely you can you can run the game on, on, on your TV screen or off, off your projector. And this, of course, would require that your learners have a device of some kind. Now, I'm going to demonstrate to you that, that all your learners need is, is a very, very simple smartphone. Okay. All right. So, you know, for the learners, it um, gives them a chance to go through content in, in, in small bits, okay, what we call bite-sized learning. They can do revision through various activities and, of course, informal assessments. So, you know, when, when years and years ago, when, when I was at school, um, you know, when the Dead Sea was still just terminally ill, it was that long ago, um, you would, you, you know, if, if you were lucky, you could you could get a friend or one or two friends to sit and study with you, and then you could ask each other questions. All right, so I think we're all familiar with, with that concept. So the great thing with Quizlet is it, it creates its own kind of study buddy um, concept, okay? Because the learners can work through an activity called learn. And so Quizlet keeps asking them questions. If the learner gets it wrong, it'll, it'll ask that question again and, and again until they get it right. And then they can also, once a learner feels like they, um, they know their work, they can actually do a, an online test which, which will give them their results immediately. All right, and so you can really make um, learning fun. All right, so the question now, how does it work? It's a simple web-based application. All learners can download the apps and um, you can find existing sets on, on literally any kind of topic. I, I, the other day, I typed in something random, life cycle of the bee, okay? And, and it, it showed me that, that the, the, there were, you know, dozens upon dozens of Quizlet flashcards that have already been created on the life cycle of the bee. So, you know, why would I go and sit now with, with a textbook and, and, and make flashcards from scratch when, when there are flashcards actually already created out there? All right. So we'll have a look at that. Um, so in essence, what you would see on your screen is there are going to be two columns for input. Literally on, on your left hand side, you would, you would type in your concept and then on the right hand side, the, there's um, a description. And I'll show you in a few minutes how that works. It's incredibly easy. Um, when, when you are creating a set of flashcards, if for example, I were to type in the word inflation in the left hand side of the column on the screen, then on the right hand side, it's, it's going to auto generate a description. So, um, it, you know, there are, because there's so many flashcards already created on this topic, um, flashcard is going to go, well, you know what, somebody's already typed a description of inflation, which one of these, you know, seven descriptions would you like? And you just, you literally just choose the description you want. Of course, you can type your own thing in as well. All right. So, um you can then create so you once you've either found and copied a, a set of flashcards you then it, it'll ask you basically to create your own copy of it and you then add that to to your personal um folder in quizlet all right so for example um there's this set of flashcards which sorry let me just go back so there's this set of flashcards which i created on inflation for my grade 12s and um these are all the things that can then be done with the set of flashcards okay so so from from the learner's point of view they would study the flashcards on on this topic inflation once the learner knows the content or they feel they know the content then they're encouraged to go onto this activity called learn. Now learn is great because it, it's going to ask the contents of those flashcards in a variety of ways, true, false questions, multiple choice questions, um, type in and answer type of questions. Okay. And as I said to you, the learner will, it, it will only finish the activity. It will only get to the last screen with, you know, balloons popping and fireworks and, and, and all that stuff. It will only get to that point if the learner has managed to answer every single question correctly. All right. Um, so I encourage them to do that. There's an activity called write as well. 
and and spell all right so so these um are aimed at helping the learners to improve you know their spelling um you know very often we have the learners saying to us uh, you know, before test or exam. In fact, just today I had a, a test in my class and the learners, you know, asked me, sir, does spelling count, you know, um, or am I going to be penalized? So using these activities, they get, they get to, you know, spell things correctly. And then create this little facility called test where the learners actually then um, do a test. And, and we're going to do that as well and uh, it gives them their result immediately. Match is a game and gravity is a game. All right. Now, from the teacher's perspective, you can create a game in class from this set of flashcards. So let's say I've got my grade 12s in here and we have done chapter 12 on inflation. I've given the, the class 15 minutes to study the flashcards. And now it's Friday afternoon, last lesson. Um, you know, we're going to create a little bit of fun. And so so then I would click on this button called live and it's going to create a game of Quizlet live. All right. Which is a team game. And um, because we're not all sitting in the same room here, it's not going to be possible for us to actually successfully run a game of live. So that's why I'm just going to show you a very short video clip. It's about a minute long. That shows Welcome to Quizlet Live the fun classroom learning game used by millions of teachers around the world. With Quizlet Live, you can create a study game in seconds that engages students through competition and collaboration. All you need to do is select your study set and click Live. Quizlet Live will then automatically generate a game. Students enter the game by scanning a QR code or by entering a unique eight-digit code. Teams mode encourages communication and collaboration between students as they work together across their devices to find the correct answer. While individual mode is great for smaller groups or virtual learning. You can track your students' progress through an automatic leaderboard as they master subjects one game at a time. Give Quizlet Live a try today. The fun, competitive learning game for ultimate student engagement. But I can assure you, the learners have so much fun. Um, you know, quiet learners that, that normally don't say a word, you really see them come alive and you can actually see how competitive people are when, when the game of life happens. All right. Um, so let me just move on. All right. So learners can study in a variety of ways, as I mentioned. Um, so, you know, all of these are independent study activities. So they do flashcards, they can do write, they can do spell. Uh, the test, of course, learn, and then there are games that the learners can play themselves, like match and gravity. All right. Um, all right. So it's it's very easy to use Quizlet. Incredibly easy to to use it to to store your flashcards, to set up your classes, and to distribute. So you would see all of these various icons on your screen once you have set up your Quizlet flashcard, um, your Quizlet account. All right. So I'm not sure how many of you know this. The, so um, you know the people who have been using Quizlet, uh, you would know that you can create um, your flashcards and then you can edit them. You know, if if you want to add more flashcards or take some away, then then you use the edit mode. Um, sharing. This is how you can then send a link for a set of flashcards to, to a, a class. You can even send it to Google Classroom, for example. Um, creating um, a folder for a specific grade or subject is very easy. And then of course, setting up classes, All right? So setting up classes is really useful and I'll show you in a moment why. It's because if you ask your learners to to study a set of flashcards for homework and to go through all the activities. You can then click on the class progress button and, and it will show you which learners have, have done the activities, okay? And it'll show you when they actually did them and how long they, they spent on it, all right? So these are the flashcards. As you can see, one can add images to, to it as well. And I'm gonna show you this afternoon how we can add images. So just a few ideas for your crystal flashcards. Here we go, we've got the term and then we've got the explanation. Term and explanation, all right? 
you can make lists as well. So actually what, what I've got over here, I'm just going to quickly show you at the bottom, um, there is, um, th there's an essay question that the learners have to do where they have to discuss the measures to combat inflation. So these headings over here are actually the subheadings that the learners would then use uh, to build their essay around. Okay, so that, that's that's an idea for, for some of you who teach a subject where, you know, there's a lot of content on which they might need to write an essay. So my, my learners have said this has helped them immensely because once they've studied these subheadings, it, it really helps them to build their, their essay around that. Okay, so that's what a printed set of flashcards looks like. Interestingly enough, if I go and actually click on this link, and this is in the PDF, it will take us straight to the set of flashcards that, that um, it originates from. All right, I've seen the penny drop with, with some of my learners as well. You know, I've introduced them to Quizlet, I give them a set of Quizlet flashcards, and then they realize, okay, well, you know, not all of my teachers are using Quizlet, and they create their own Quizlet flashcard sets, and then you're, you're right, they, sh they share them among their friends. Now, I, I've got a confession to make because um, when when I look at this this account of mine, okay, grade, grade 12 economics, um, the all of these Quizlet flashcards that, that you see here, so I'm, I'm just going to quickly go there to alphabetical. So all of these Quizlet flashcards from chapter one all the way through to, to the end, okay, to, 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 to this one over here, mostly the learners made these Quizlet flashcards and I just told them to then share the link with me and then I put them all into my folder and I, I shared it among all of them by way of putting them in in a class and and so honestly all of all of these flashcards that you see here mostly were made in in one in one lesson i mean that, that's incredible i mean the power of collaboration so the question here why create a class well so that you can add and modify sets without having to notify the learners so i'm going to just quickly go go to that point i often update quizlet flashcard sets okay I'll often update them and because the learners are already in in a class I, I don't need to tell them you know if if i update a set of flashcards this morning um on on let's say economic and social indicators the learners when they click on on that set of flashcards they're going to have the most up-to-date version anyway all right so if we have a look at my library over here you can see i've got my classes set up and then i've got my study sets all right so this is where I actually create the content. Okay, I actually create the content. So if we look at grade 12, for example, uh, study sets, where is it? I don't want to get too bogged down in detail over here. Oh, view all sets. In, in your Quizlet account, here at your library, okay? It's got these tabs, classes, study sets, folders, and then expert solutions. That relates to some published textbooks already have Quizlet flashcards created. All right. So folders is where I create my content. So in folders, um, you can easily create a, 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 a new folder. Um, I've already got this existing one, grade 12 economics. So I want to find one let's call it uh so i'm going to look for something on um monetary policy so all i do is i type in monetary policy okay and i just hit enter and now all of the quizlet flashcards that have been created related to to this topic there they are here we go south african reserve bank and monetary policy Here's one on monetary policy. Here's one, another one, all right? So there are plenty that have already been created for you. Now, the great thing is that you can actually preview them, okay? All right, so this one I'm not gonna have a look at because it was actually created by me. Um, so I'm gonna have a look at this one over here. Uh, that's got 83 terms. That's very, very interesting. So I can have a look at preview. And I don't really like this one, so I'm not going to take that one. I'm going to have a look at this one over here. Um, preview. 
Okay, I think it's just a kind of a copy of that one. But the point is that you can have a look and eventually you will find um, something that, that suits you. All right. So I'm going to type in a different one quickly. Uh, fiscal loops. So if we look at fiscal policy, so again, you can you can then find something something that suits you. All right. So here's one that's got 18 terms. I can have a quick preview. All right. If I like that one, then I can click on study. All right. And from here, one is able to to copy it. All right. So so there we go. So I found this one on fiscal policy. And the important thing here now is that I'm going to go to save and edit. Okay, so I go to save and edit. And so it's going to ask me where I want to put it. Okay, so here we go. It's fiscal policy. That's what it's called. Chapter 12 vocab. So I, I can change this now and I can say, you know, um, adapted for um, NSC um, grade 12 economics exam and then I can make the changes I want so fiscal policy now the interesting thing is if I don't like the definition it's given me here so it says the federal definition then I can okay so normally one can change it it's just so if I delete that okay now so you think about this you've got your term the minute you click on enter definition, it's actually going to already give you a list of definitions um, that, uh, you know, have most uh, often been, been selected. All right. So I like this one over here, the use of government spending and revenue. And there we go. So it saved me a whole lot of typing um, and, and I've actually changed the flashcards to what I want. So. Once, once you've made all the adjustments to the set of flashcards, so remember that I haven't typed this out, okay? I literally just went and found a set of flashcards that works for me, um, and and all I have to do now is just tweak it to to suit, you know, what what I have taught my learners or what I want them to know. All right, you can add more cards if you want to. So literally, you know, I could go and add a card, and I can say yeah. Uh, um, so I could, for example, uh, type there, um, just trying to think of something appropriate, national budget, okay? And then I can now type a definition or just simply enter the box. And as you can see, it's going to give me some options that I can literally just grab over there. And I like that one over there, the yearly financial plan of the national government. And there we go. I've added that card. All right. Then all I do now literally is I can click on create. And so what I've done is I've gone and copied a set of flashcards that already exists. And I've simply made some adjustments to it so that I can use it. All right. So at this stage, what I would like to do, I don't want to send it by email to anybody. Um, I don't want to share it on Google Classroom. I'm simply going to add it to at the stage a folder all right so i'm going to add it to my folder so i choose here add to folder and i want this to be for my grade 12 economics class so the minute i click on there once it goes to minus um, then i know that that it's actually um, selected it all right uh, so i've i've added it to my folder I would also like to add this to my class, my grade 12 class. All right, so I'm going to add this to my class. And there we go. So I add it to the class. Now my grade 12 learners will actually have it already. So when when they log into the, the Quizlet class, they will now see that that set of flashcards has been has been added for them. All right. So let's just check it quickly. So my library, I go to folders and I put that under grade 12 economics. 
And so you can you can remember there were there were 21 sets. Sorry, there were 20 sets. There are now 21 sets. So this is the one that I copied and threw into my folder. All right. So I can sort this according to alphabetical. And um, yeah, it, it will appear then, you know, in, in a logical um, uh, sequence. All right. So I just want to quickly check the things that, that we had planned to, to cover, how far we are. All right, so we've done the introduction. I've found and copied a, a set of flashcards. Um, all right, so the other thing that, that we're going to do is have a look at adding images to flashcards, getting you to join a class and complete a test, and then also playing a game of checkpoint. Okay. So just quickly going back into the slideshow. So as I've, as I've mentioned to you, it's, uh, I think it's, it's well worth creating a class because then you can actually see the progress. All right. So this is a class that I've got at the moment, grade seven R EMS, and I've clicked on progress. I've had a look, I asked them a week or two ago to take a look at topic eight to look at those flashcards. So for you're able to select, you're able to filter how far back you want to go. What have they done in the last day? What have they done in the last week? What have they done in the last month, three months, six months, year? All right. And so I can see that this particular learner has finished doing the flashcards. They've finished doing the test. They've finished doing match. Okay. But they started on learn, but they've not finished it. This learner over here has completed all of the activities because there's a tick next to everything. There's a tick next to match. There's a tick next to the test. There's a tick next to the flashcards and next to learn. So I don't need to walk around and check homework. I don't need to ask learners who's done their work. I can simply go into this particular class and I can see from from uh, the, the dashboard exactly what has been done or not done. So, okay, just yes. to touch you off there, we yeah. have a question from okay. a colleague. Yes, um, you may good. unmute yourself, Nicholas. Okay, Nicholas. All right. If, if, okay, let's carry on. They can unmute okay, and then speak yeah, so as once, we go. Yeah, so wants to ask, that's fine. So, so what I've done now as well, um, so I'm, I'm not actually sort of in, in on a live Quizlet page. I've just taken a screenshot, um, just sort of mindful of kind of poppy stuff. Um, so, so for example, th this particular learner, um, I wanted to see how the learner did in the test. So all I did was I moved my my mouse over here where it says test and just kind of hovered over that that item and it tells me that this particular learner finished the test three weeks ago and they they got 60 percent for that test so i can have a look at this and then you know i can call that learner and i can i can actually say to them look you know i think you need to spend a bit more time on the learn activity and then try and redo the test and see if you can get yourself up to 80 or 90 percent. So that's actually a really, really nice feature of using the um, of setting your classes up and and then you can keep tabs on how your learners are, are, are doing. All right. So I just want to show everybody how embedded Quizlet is in my particular offering. OK. So we make use of, of, of the Parklands uh, College intranet. So it's just a, a big Google site that's kind of got a link to, to other Google sites for every single subject. And so in my case, in my case, let me just go here. Okay, escape. So here we go. Um, so on the Parklands intranet, this is for economics. I'm gonna quickly go to grade 10. If we have a look at quarter one, you'll see that that I've actually got a button right there for the Quizlet flashcard. So if learners, you know, want sort of quick access to, 
quickly study the quiz with flashcards, then they will just click on that button. In the notes, in the notes, instead of actually having a glossary list, I've actually included the link to the Quizlet flashcards as the very first item in the notes. So there's an idea for some of you out there who do give your learners notes, especially if they live notes in the form of Google Docs and things like that. Um, include the link to the Quizlet flashcards in the notes that you're giving your learners. So if I click over there, for example, it's going to take me straight to the Quizlet flashcards. And then Checkpoint creates um, an individual quiz game, um, a little bit, I suppose, like Kahoot or, or, or one of those, where it basically creates multiple choice questions. And, and there's a time limit allowed for, for learners to be able to answer the questions. All right. Uh, so there's that one. On. Okay, we'll have a look at the famous. Oh, with well, this one, um, what I've done is to demonstrate that you can actually add images to, to your flashcards, right? So, this one over here. So, you know, whatever subject it is you're teaching, maybe you teach geography, maybe you teach history, maybe whatever it is, if, if it's appropriate to use images, you can do that with your Quizlet flashcards, which I think is, is very, very nice. So, um, so creating your own Quizlet account, uh, for those of you who have not yet got one, it's that simple. You just go to www.quizlet.com and um, I recommend that you sign up with your, with your Google account. Um, it gives you other options, Facebook, etc. because then at least you're not going to have to worry about typing in a username and password every time you, you, you join. Okay. So... It's that simple. I just want to quickly go to, um, all right, yeah. So, so what I wanted you to do is from your side, just to experience quickly what it looks like for us to set up a game of Quizlet Live. All right, and I, I highly recommend this in, in your class. Um, as I said, if there is Wi-Fi available at your school, if your learners do have a, a smartphone, that's literally all you need. Let's say you've got 30 learners in your class, even if only 15 of them, if only half of them have got a device, you can still set up a game of Quizlet Live because you just get you know, learners who don't have a device just to kind of pair up with, with somebody who does have a device. Please join in, okay? So we'd like to see as many people as possible join in on Checkpoint. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Checkpoint. Okay. And now it says, right, which questions would you like to ask? Um, select six to 12 questions. So I can select which ones I want. I'm just going to go with start with 12 random questions, okay? But there are, how many? I think there are 30 flashcards here. So I can select which flashcards I want to be in the game. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on start with 12 random questions. Once we get to the end of the game, 
um, then obviously on the big screen it's going to show so well done to joe joe's the winner um Muhammad came second and mb a joint second so we've got an average of 85 percent the high school was 12 and four people got 80 percent or higher the nice thing is that it also then gives you some stats okay so it's going to give some stats on um which questions uh people got right and which people got got wrong all right so we can see these ones over here the reichstag building and piazza san marco those were the more difficult ones but these ones up the top here people found quite easy all right um let's see what else can i show you so i've got i love this it's it's um quizlet has come a long way <laughs> and it's this is just so awesome yeah it's it's great and as i say you know i'm you know, looking at my own stats sorry craig i'm looking at my own stats here so oh, as okay. a learner i can see wow i got 92 percent with this i only got one wrong um because right. i thought the red rock was uh mount kilimanjaro <laughs> and i okay. can i can check my own work on my Fantastic. side so i know what i have to go and yeah. devise so yeah. this is awesome Fantastic. Fantastic. And so, you know, I'm just going to remind everybody again online, as long as your learners have got a smartphone, it doesn't have to be a brand new phone. In fact, I'm sitting here with a Huawei P20 Lite that is five years old. It's even survived a dressed swim one afternoon. I fell in the pool and quickly jumped out. So a very simple device, um, you know, to someone like me who's a, a Quizlet ambassador. Uh, so what have we got here sorry let's just go back a step so there are literally dozens upon dozens of of flashcard sets sorry let me just go to the right one um yeah here we go so quizlet works for any subject over 500 million sets and i've got to tell you this set of flashcards we're seeing here is about four or five years old so so by now, there's, there's probably 800 million sets. Admittedly, some of them are, are, are clones of sets in the same way that I copied a set of flashcards and just tweaked it slightly. So yes, there probably are, you know, a, a, a lot of kind of duplicates there, but I can assure you there are plenty of, of sets already um, created that are usable. And as you can see, it's very, very easy to make this available to your learners. In fact, and just, just one more thing, mm, Craig. Yeah. One thing that I really enjoyed was the um, wonderful English teachers out there who have already created all the quizlets for yes. your Shakespeare and yes. your poetry and yeah. your everything. So if you're an English Absolutely. teacher and you want to know some more about Macbeth, you search for Macbeth and there you have all of your flashcards, Romeo and Juliet, even the most obscure Shakespearean play that there is, there is something there for you. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly what I've done. It's I've just a gone lot. And I've found one here, Macbeth, there's a hundred terms, I can preview it. And then, you know, I can obviously make adjustments to it as I would like to, and and then um, make it available to, to the learners. So, uh, I just want to go back to that point very quickly. Um, so well done to all of these people. I can obviously I can create a new game or restart the game if I want to. So often the learners want to play the game again. It's, it's quite incredible. 